everybody to the Chiropractic Society of Rhode Island's podcast, Get a Spine. My name is Dr. Michael Godfrey, practicing in Aquinnah Chiropractic in Middletown, Rhode Island. And with me today is Dr. John Hayes and Dr. David Bruno, two chiropractors who have a wealth of experience. So Dr. David, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I was, uh, I've been practicing in Rhode Island since 1979, uh, graduated from National College of Chiropractic in 1979 and uh, worked with uh, Dr. Leninfa. And uh, we'll talk about history to, uh, when we get there, but worked with him for uh, maybe a year and then set up my own practice and been practicing in North Providence since that time. Uh, before that, I was I was uh, at Providence College, graduated in 1975, uh, so local, stayed local, and, you know, it's been uh, obviously a great experience, and my daughter's in my practice with me, which, uh, which we all wish that that was something that happened. I have also two, old, two sons older than her, but they decided not to become chiropractors, but she is, and it's wonderful. So that's a brief synopsis of myself. Excellent. Dr. John. Yes, sir. A little sir. bit about you. Yeah, I, uh, I graduated from Chiropractic College in 1979 and immediately went up to uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. And in, uh, during, before graduation, I interned with a doctor in Man Manchester and then worked for him for about a year <clears throat> prior to moving to Portland, Maine uh, um, in uh, 1981 and set up my, my, my practice there. Uh, my wife and I have four children, um, and the oldest, Amber, took over my practice uh, about five years ago in Portland, and I moved back down here to Rhode Island, where my wife and I both grew up. Uh, I had a practice here in, uh, in Newport for about a year, and then decided to play a little more golf, uh, and if Dr. Dave can get over, uh, that, would be, uh, that would be best. Maybe we should wait a few months before doing that. But uh, I'm happy to be back here in, uh, in Rhode Island with all my buddies. And uh, it's nice to get to know the Chiropractic Society. I was involved pretty heavily in the uh, Maine Chiropractic Association and was uh, a past president there uh, and uh, served a stint on the Board of Examiners in Maine also. So you two share two common uh two common happenings there both have children offspring as chiropractors which is very very cool and also both working on your golf games so uh we'll we'll, we'll take any tips on golf and also any thoughts on what you see as the positive changes that have happened in your almost uh well around 40 years worth of practice for both of you in chiropractic. Who wants to take it? Sure, well, I'll start. I'll start, I, uh, uh, as, as John said, and, and uh, myself as well, I've had uh, been involved with the Chiropractic Society of Rhode Island since 1979. It wasn't a year that I did not uh, participate and uh, belong to the society and also past president. I've been on the board of examiners, uh, chairman of that for many years, but long story short, so we have, uh, you know, we parallel each other. Daughters have taken over practices. So like you say, wonderful. But given a little historical uh, perspective on chiropractic, especially in Rhode Island, it was very interesting because um, in 1979, I remember going to my first CSRI, CSRI meeting and, you know, every chiropractor from the state that belonged to the CSRI, which is probably just taking a guess, 80% was there at the meeting. Stand up only, it, the passion, the, uh, it was just amazing. And that really motivated me, you know, to become, belong to the organization. Uh, back then, I mean, I, I um, oh boy, there were doctors even then, you know, put in jail. I can even give you names and so forth. But, but I always had that connection as I went along with my career between the older doctors, who most of them have passed away, they'd be 90 plus, and the younger doctors. 
so I do share a pretty good historical uh, uh, background on that and a point of view. But getting back to this Carpic side of Rhode Island, the, the meetings were such, pat oh, it, it was like you've never seen. There was, I mean, a, a, in a constructive way, yelling, screaming. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. Every month we had meetings, everybody would be there. Um, during that time also that we had a wonderful, uh, there was a, almost an encyclopedia of notes dating back to the 1940s that the secretary at every meeting would document. Um, and I try to preserve that when I was president a while back. But as things go, you don't know what happens to that. And wow, if we ever found that and you just read through it, like it would be, it, it's incredible on everything that was done and what was trying trying to be done. It, it was almost like history repeating itself. You know, you, you would just be shocked, you know, and it, that's, a, and I, I don't know where it is and things seem to have disappeared as time went on. But, uh, but that passion, you know, and, and you like to see it shared, but times change, you know, people change and things change. So things are done much differently now than before. And I, my, my feeling was always that, uh, you know, if you belong to the site, especially when you're younger, I, it, we all have kids, we all have families and so on and so forth, but you have to try to participate in some way. Or as back then, you know, I said, hey, how can I help? And they said, find a way to help. Let us know what you can do. What's your strength? Just do, do something to help us. Now that you go in the meetings, and you understand what we're trying to accomplish. So, it, you know, back in 1979, of course, again, chiropractors were still put in jail uh, for recommending things that we recommend routinely, including different supplements and uh, whether it's uh, recommending beta carotene and things like this, you know, that was definitely considered witchcraft back in the 70s. Uh, and there's some interesting stories about that. But, um, you know, the, the hope was that we would get into and plugged into mainstream insurance companies and so forth. So 79, uh, you know, that was a, a mission more or less that started in the 80s. And I think 1987 is when we actually received uh, coverage from Blue Cross. At that time, there was Classic Blue. They were the big insurance. But the older guard and, and also myself and some of those meetings and some of the notes that were taken, you always had a reservation about that because I remember you know, everything was on a cash basis. You know, your patients came in because of what you did. You know, there weren't too many referrals other than patients themselves. You know, we weren't considered part of the allopathic or medical community at all. Uh, so, you know, and again, that change started in 87. You know, and I saw the, even in a, in a national level, the American Chiropractic Association, you know, change from more of a, hey, let's keep our autonomy as chiropractors and our basic chiropractic tenant to more of a, you know, let's try to belong where we can. And again, I'm, I'm being very general. So, you know, it, it part of like maybe 10 years ago, it was started, hey, maybe our, our, our strength is let's get into the rehabilitation area, which I was always kind of against. And again, I'm really speaking specifically, but the ACA seemed to gravitate to that more of a, uh, let's try to be included in the rehab end. You know, in, in, you know, we've maybe kept our autonomy as chiropractors, but I think we were a little bit more defined then. You know, we were, you know, for the better or worse, we were, we were chiropractors. People know what we did. Hey, yeah, they're back crackers. They, they adjusted spines. You know, there wasn't any confusion. We're now, I mean, are we nutritionists? Are we rehab specialists? Do we do pin and stretch on muscles? Are we part physical therapists, do we part doctors who we diagnose? And we know we're all those things, but we seem to lost in identity. Again, just my opinion. Um, but anyway, just that's just a little bit of a nutshell, you know, going forward. Maybe I try to go too fast because I could talk on it for a half hour. But anyway, I'll uh, defer now back to you, Mike. Well, let's, let, let's go to Dr. John and see what thoughts he has on his... Uh the change in chiropractic scene from the start in Maine to where things are at now? Well, I, I can just uh, reiterate what, uh, say, say ditto what Dave said. I mean, my, my experience <clears throat> was basically about the same. When I first moved to Maine to uh, set up practice, um, there was a camaraderie. 
And back then when we, we, as you know, we have to take continuing education credits every year. <clears throat> and each state is different, but we had two places uh, in Maine where we came together as a, uh, as a group, as an association, at get our continuing education credits. But, uh, well, two places. One was in South Portland, Maine, and one was in Rockland, Maine at the Samoset Resort. And it seemed like the, that resort was a, a magnet for but it, it, me going to spend the weekend getting continuing education credits. I took my whole family. You know, I took all four children and, and you probably experienced the same thing back then in the 80s and the 90s. And uh, I think a big change happened when um, we started using computers. And we could, we, could, uh, uh, um, we, we didn't have anywhere to get our continuing education credits. I don't know if that's one of the, Dave says, uh, times change. So I don't know if that one of the, one of the different factors of how things change, but um, I think it had something to do with it. Um, but in my first experience with, chiropr with, chiropr with a chiropractor was Dr. Felicia in Narragansett, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. uh, back in the mid uh, and uh, probably in the mid and early 70s. And he was a, a guiding force for me to become a chiropractor. And he had a, a box on the wall and I paid my $2 or $5 or whatever it is. But I went, I went, I went to see a chiropractor to be healthy. I didn't go in to have any type of, of uh, disease, pain alleviated. It was uh, just as a maintain, to maintain my, uh, my health. And I really liked that focus. Um, but when I got into practice, uh, uh, I, well, when I really first started, um, uh, when I got out of school was to uh, become a diplomate in orthopedics. And that opened another world to me and, and uh, a whole another world of what, how, how valuable chiropractic can be. And that's something the world still doesn't know um, um, how valuable we, we can be, you know, uh, and uh, our reach is, is vast, although we're still a small um, uh, population, uh, a small percentage of the population. Uh, I remember once in the, I think it was probably around the late 1990s, and I got invited by a, um, a, neuro a neurosurgeon to come to a meeting. And he had uh, invited 10 chiropractors from the Portland area to come to a meeting. And, and uh, they, they gave, us, gave us dinner, and they were looking for referrals, for us, but they, the, the bottom line was they said, we really like how you chiropractors see patients. You guys know what you're doing when you see someone come in with pain in their back or their neck, or they have extremity symptoms. <clears throat> and we want to send you patients the first line of defense before they come in to see me. What they were saying is that patients were coming from the primary care doctors for some back pain, which could be better treated in a chiropractic office. And so they want to be a triage for patients because we know when a patient needs to be seen by a neurogen. We can tell before we have an MRI schedule. Um, and, you know, that told me that the, the, the professions have merged and now the value of chiropractors could, be, <clears throat> could really be seen. Um, and that is still there. Although, as Dave is saying, we have branched out into areas where um, our, where our definition has kind of been blurred. Um, and I'd like to get back to, to, to more of a standard way of being a chiropractor. Although I'm not against um, uh, chiropractors branching out, but the, but the, the lines have to be dated um, and definitions have to be uh, routinized, I think. So that and, and uh, what else can I say? Well, go ahead, Mike. Take That's over okay. Uh, we, we're, we're practicing now in, in very unique times. Actually, we're doing what uh, the world does these days, which is Zoom conference calling. Uh, Dr. Dave, do you see any changes in practice there related to the pandemic? What kinds of things that you need to done, need to be doing in relation to the pandemic? What, what kinds of issues 
that you've seen uh, in your patients in relation to the pandemic? Well, Jen, I'm, and I'm sure I'm sure we we are uh, all of the same thought there. You know, uh, obviously, you know, practices. I know ours is, you know, decreased. Uh, you can't see as many people. You have to be careful with with all the uh, sanitation of, you know, doorknobs and tables and you know all these things that you have to do repeatedly. Uh, you know, and in, in, in the fear that goes along with that. You know, patients not wanting to come in. Uh, because they're afraid. So, you know, you're trying to instill confidence and do the things that we're supposed to do, um, you know, to create that. I mean, I, I think it's, uh, you know, I, not to get into pandemic issues, but, you know, we'll get through it and things will be much better. And, it, you know, I'm sure by late fall, we'll all be uh, vaccinated and, you know, things will be settled down and these viruses won't have a chance to replicate from host to host. And, um, you know, maybe our practices can get back to normal, especially with the fear factor. I mean, will we always have masks and will things change? Well, of course, but, you know, but it overall, I mean, the conditions, the problems that you see, see is still the same. I think people, uh, I think, and again, you know, my daughter's taken over the practice, as you know, and, you know, her patients, I think people are waiting longer and you might see them in more pain. You know, they're maybe, well, maybe I don't have to come in. You know, so more of the acuteness where they would come in right away because they got a golf tournament in two days. You know, they might, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm being a little, a little levity. But the point is, I think that's a big issue, too, you know, that I've seen. I uh, see. But I'm sure all our practices are cut down, you know, decreased as far as numbers go by, you know, what's happening. Gotcha. Well, uh, speaking of golf, since we have two golf experts with us today. Uh, let's talk a little bit about chiropractic and golf and any golf tips that you can give to someone like myself who would love to, love to, love to break a hundred, but I'm not even close right now. So Dr. John, what do you see with golf and chiropractic? Let me look into my call, Michael. I, I, I can see you standing on the first tee and uh, maybe not whiffing this time. Uh, uh, with your first tee ball, um, uh, I I wrote a book on golf exercise back in the uh, in the eighties, and um, really um, had a, a lot to do with uh, golf in my practice. And um, uh, and my kids were like like Dave's daughter was very involved with golf, and probably I don't know is she still playing, Dave. Um, yeah, well, I got to work in six days a week, so, you know, <laughs> but, 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 uh, but, yeah, but yes, there are uh, my friends who say, why don't you go back work in six days a week? And we'll take her to member guests. <laughs> so that's, I get that a lot and they're probably yeah. right. Yeah. But, uh, she's yeah. But, it, but certainly not as much as, you know, now that she's married and so on and so forth, but she enjoys, does enjoy the game and does yeah. play. Yeah, she maybe played 10 or 12 times last year. Wow. So wow. what do we but, have for tips? But, Chiropractic and golf. Well, the, 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 the best thing, to, the best exercise and the best way to get better is to play golf. Um, oh. if, if you, <laughs> you know, Must I? I, yeah, <laughs> I, I can tell you there's a whole bunch of exercises to do, but uh, if you can't swing the club, then, you, you know, it's, uh, you really need three things. You need talent. You need um, um, uh, the, the game itself. Um, you need to have lessons from a golf pro. And you just need to get out there and, and play. Getting in the gym and uh, doing your exercises, that's all great and good if you want to hit it longer. Um, but, you know, as in any sport, if you want to get better, exercise has to be part of the, part of the, part of the deal. As chiropractors, I mean, chiropractic has been with the game of golf for a long time. And uh, indeed, some professional players travel or have, um, have, have uh, golfers with them. I know in my practice, uh, when we had a professional tournament come through town, um, I would get a call and, and, uh, and go to, um, to, uh, to work on some, some of the guys and gals. Uh, I worked um, in the 2006 uh, U.S. Women's Open at Newport, where I'm a member. And also during, the, I was on the medical team in 95, when Tiger Woods won, um, and just being around that uh, uh, and, and helping the players, I remember one one um, 
player in 2006, uh, had severe headaches. And I got a call on a walkie talkie and I went into the, uh, into the trainers. Um, um, they have the big tra trailers, you know, the, the where you, they can exercise. They have some treatment tables in there too. And um, I gave this uh, um, lady a, an adjustment and, and she made, she played and made the cut and made some money. Um, got a picture with her, you know, uh, so I worked with some of the girls there, Nant, uh, um, uh, Gulbis and uh, Christy Kerr and, and some of the Meg Mallon back then. Um, uh, and so chiropractors has been really helpful just in what we do to help patients, uh, help players play better, as well as uh, keep them out of, uh, keep them symptom free. Well, there's certainly a significant amount of spinal stress uh, in the golf swing for sure. And uh, uh, you mentioned Tiger Woods, who uh, is a major advocate of chiropractic in golf. Uh, back in the, uh, was it 95 or I think it was 95, maybe. 95, when he, uh, 95. He, uh, rolled the uh, Rose Bowl uh, float for chiropractic, right? Okay. And Dr. Dave, oh. well, what do you say question, about chiropractic and golf? Well, your question originally was, do you have any tips? But, you know, I would, I would say this. If you want to get as good as John is, you got to really work at it, Mike. John's just a natural talent. I, I only played with him once this year, this past year. And hopefully, going forward, I hope to play several more times with him and, you know, maybe get a lesson while I'm playing with him, too. But, uh, but you know... It, he said it best too. you know, you have to get out and play. I mean, if somebody's really serious about the game, you know, first of all, yeah, chiropractic can help in the biomechanical aspect of it. You know, the flexibility, getting your balance and you know, all the things that we know, and, you know, and there's um, certainly books uh, as John wrote a book. And um, I forget too, we had a seminar not about five or six years ago right. in uh, uh, Blanchard. Was his name Blanchard? Yep who Dr. came Jeff. and is like, yeah, yeah, you know, so, you know, great what we can do and this education, how we can educate our patients and maybe get involved in that end of sports medicine better. But ultimately doing all that, you still have to have technique, you know, a slower backswing, you got to try to stay steady, you know, on downswing, stay behind the ball, you get all these things. So Mike, I would consult your local PGA pro for some lessons you know, because you work out, you get the flexibility, you just got to get out there and play and maybe get a few pointers. But hopefully we can play this year and, uh, you know, three of us, and that would be great. Oh, there you go. I get an inclusion, <laughs> <You know>? huh? <laughs> it's excellent. You know, I, I, I'll I, caddy I, for you, Mike. I'll, I'll, I'll be your caddy. I, I, I did. I, I used to caddy actually when I was younger at uh, the club where I lived in Long Island and Long Beach. But uh, so I actually understand the game. But for some reason, having translated that into my uh, two or three times a year uh, game, I, I did actually take some lessons. And I'm not going to uh, talk much about that because it actually was not a positive experience with <laughs> one of the pros. Uh, but we'll we'll leave that for. Did, another time. Did he tell you to quit? <laughs> <laughs> close, close to it. <laughs> close to it. He, he knew that I was uh, teaching tennis in the community that I, you know, that I had played tennis and I had coached tennis and all. So he thought that there would be an automatic translation from my understanding of the game of tennis to my understanding of the game of golf. And uh, for some reason, my slice didn't understand that and it just stayed with me regardless of what he told me and it, he got more frustrated than i did actually now i get a good joke about that but i'll tell you sometime when we're off the air about the, about a pro and a golfer but that's exactly right. uh, yeah Fair enough. So, yeah. Dr. John, you, you and, and I'm sure, Dr. Dave, you've had a similar experience. You mentioned treating some of the golf pros at the, uh, in particular, at the Women's U.S. Open. And I, though I, I've treated some of the local Rhode Island golfers, more of my uh, sports treatment has come in the way of the tennis tournament that happens at Newport uh Casino grass at the Newport grass uh, tournament. And so 
similar to you when they come into town from time to time, I've treated some of the golfers and actually traveled uh, with uh, a couple of them, uh, the tennis players, I mean. And then also when the um, America's Cup racing team was in, I called to go down there and treat some of these Kiwis with uh, massive, massive uh, bodies that were, uh, you know, uh, working on the America's Cup. So that's all been fun. And I'm sure Dave has similar experience. And so I, re I really enjoy that aspect of chiropractic. And that, that's one of the fun things about chiropractic. You never know where it's going to take you sometimes, who's going to walk in the door and what their issues are going to be and what their experiences have been and uh, who they are and what they're doing in the world. And so uh, we're blessed to be able to assist people in getting back on the road to <clears throat> better health. So with that, let's uh, just tell the folks how they can best reach you, Dr. Dave, Dr. John. Well, the best for myself, it's um, email is always the best way. It's uh, dr.bruno, B-R-U-N-O, at verizon.net. That would be the best way. dr.bruno at Verizon. Dot net. Yep. Okay, Dr. John, if anybody needs to follow up with you, what's the I best still, way to reach you? I still have my uh, main cell phone, uh, and uh, the number is 207-321-9087. And my email address is hayescairo, H-A-Y-E-S-C-H-I-R-O, at earthlink.net. And Very incidentally... Incidentally, before we go, I just want to, about golf, and this is, uh, uh, chiropractors can use this uh, in, in their practice, use this knowledge. Uh, there was some research done years ago. <clears throat> I, taught a, um, uh, I taught a golf exercise program for Palmer College in the 90s, and uh, there was some research done on how you were mentioned the, the stress of the golf swing on the spine. And they uh, uh, took some in vivo uh, sections of the lumbar spine and, and put torque and torsion on the lumbar spine. And they found that the amount of force that we put on our lower backs in the golf swing can actually herniate a disc. So take that knowledge and be kind to yourself. Yep. Better take care of ourselves for sure and get Get, get well adjusted with the local chiropractor. So I want to thank Dr. John and Dr. Dave for their insight. This is Dr. Michael Gottfried with the Chiropractic Society of Rhode Island's podcast, Get a Spine.